Back in about 1988, I had started racing cross, taking the beat up old car and loading a bunch of people in and going all around New England and hitting up the local cross scene. A lot of really high-end pros have gone through that program and have worked with Stu and I think there's, there's not a whole lot of people who are more knowledgeable. I mean, I've known Stu since 2001 when I started racing cross and stuff like that. I bought my first frame from him when he, um, from his shop. But they, I mean, it's the longest standing program out there. Stu start, uh, started Cyclocross World, I think in 99 or 98. Just with how many top athletes that they've supported throughout their careers with like Limbaset and Jeremy Powers. And it's very cool because it, the best in cyclocross in the U.S. have somehow been connected by cyclecrossworld.com sometime throughout their year and it's super cool to just be a part of that. It's really nothing magical, it's just something I enjoy doing. I love doing it. It's, it's the most fun I've ever had. Whether it's signing a rider or whether it's working with sponsors or whether it's setting up the trailer or whether it's slinging you know, bikes in the pit or pressure washing the bikes and all that, it's just it's all part of the game. It's, it's just a lot of fun. It's an iconic program. I mean, it's, it's been around for so long. You've seen so many people go through it. Their careers were made on this program. You know, they were, they were good racers before, and, you know, through the help of the program, they've become great racers. They've learned what it is to be a, a, a real professional. And that's what kind of I've always thought about the program. is like, oh, wow, that's where you go to become a professional. They treat you as such, and I think in, in turn, you learn to be that person. I came to Cannondale Cyclocross World my first year out of the junior, so my first year under 23 was my first year riding. I think Stu's objective was give him the resources, let's see how he reacts to it, and I feel like I reacted really well, and the support has been fantastic. There was one day I think it was early, early spring, and one of the spring classics were on. And I was just amped up. I was an amped up seven-year-old, and I was bugging my dad to take me out for a bike ride. So we went out on this ride. It, was, it ended up being 20 miles or something. We got lost. Or, but it was pouring rain. It was really cold. And it was, I remember that was the first miserable day I had on a bike. At the time, it was miserable. But I think afterwards, it was just a sense of accomplishment. The first Nationals I was at was, I think it was 2005 in Providence, Rhode Island. And that was the year it was really icy, really snowy, just terrible conditions, but you know, 10-year-old Curtis loved it just because you know, you're playing in the snow, you're crashing in this corner and you're just slipping and sliding, having a good time. I mean, of course, I want the win. Uh, it's something that's always eluded me for the past 10 years. With a course like this, it's going to be a pretty deserving winner, whoever wins. You know, I think for the past couple of years, especially, I've been able to see big jumps in my development. You know, sometimes I get a little impatient with things, but there's a lot of people just, you know, keep reminding me that I still have a lot of time. You know, I'm a sophomore in college, third year under 23. You know, I, I think that I have more room to develop as an athlete. I don't think I'm near my peak yet, so that, that's what I'm really excited about. As time went on, I ended up bumping into Tim as a junior. That was the fall of 1995, and I remember being in the bike shop, which happened to be Stu's bike shop. He's like, do you want to go to a cross race? I'm like, sure. And it just became something where we always traveled together and raced together. We had this setup where he and I and his wife Emily shared hotel rooms for years, the three of us in there. And really the first year of Cyclocross World and really getting big I think was, was 2005. I had gotten sponsorship from Cannondale for the upcoming 2006 season. I did that year as Cannondale next to the Cyclocross World team and then in 2007, finally, we joined both into the same team, and that's when we became really Cannondale Cyclocross World. It's been about, I don't know, I think almost 10 years we've been with Cannondale and SRAM. And that's a huge amount of time. It's, it's, it's almost my entire career. 
with one company. You know, I've, we've been riding SRAM since the very beginning when they first started to go from mountain bike into road. The bikes are great. We have, I mean, I think we have the best technical sponsors in, in the sport, you know. From Canada with the frames and then from Zip and SRAM and Avid and Cork and like, you know, it doesn't get any better. So for, for me, it was all the best equipment sponsors and the best kind of staff support, you know, and that was a big reason why I came over here. They're always a step ahead of me, and so every time I think I have something figured out, even being a career mechanic myself, 10 or 12 years of wrenching on bikes, and still these guys are like, hang on, Hyde, like, <laughs> slow your roll, like, we gotta get this dialed in first. And so I'm like, oh, wow, you're a wizard. This is why I didn't sleep. I was thinking about handlebars. Really? No. Maybe. I don't know. I hope, I hope it goes deeper than that. <laughs> things get done you know and it's not like you have to ask them to get done or like look over and make sure things get are gonna be handled they just get done you know and I mean Stu's a legend and you know Joe and all these guys on here that are like you see them around and they're they have respect from everyone and they always they always know exactly what to do and they are they're always in the right place at the right time and um, I've always had such a tremendous amount of respect for all of them and kind of a dream come true to be on the program the work that these guys put out is incredible um, I mean, they're tireless. It's an incredible feeling to know that you have such a powerful force behind you and um, kind of makes you feel unstoppable. But, you know, <laughs> it's just a feeling. I came on board with CandleCyclecrossWorld.com in 2010. My first year U23, so 18 years old. That first year, I was totally clueless, totally starstruck. Each year after that, I, I grew a little bit. It's super awesome past five years with the team, just developing and learning, and every, every race, every day, I'm learning something new. There's a velodrome in Kenosha, Wisconsin, that's the town over from where I grew up, and they have Monday night stock bike racing for kids throughout the summer, and my mom took my sister and I down there, and from seven to 10 years old, I raced on that velodrome every summer, and I just loved it. I, I just kept wanting to do it, and found road and mountain bike and cycle cross from that track upbringing. I think so far in terms of seeing my own career I've just been taking it day by day and year by year and just have that word development in my head and racing with Marion University it was just like these four years we're racing collegiate cycling we're balancing racing with Cannondale Cyclocross World, we're trying to earn a degree, and and once that four years was over, I, I was kind of lost for a, like a good half a year, a year, because I didn't know what I was supposed to do now. So that was a super weird time for me, but this cross season has been more like sit down and try to plan, so it's been a little more focused and specific. I have this mindset where it's like I'm starting this race to, to win. And w whether I do or not, just having that mindset is a huge step forward for me. So I'm super proud of that and proud of the work I've done to try to get to that point mentally. Action! <laughs> I definitely think I'm on the back side of my career. I mean, just in terms of my age and motivation to be out there and stuff like that. And I feel comfortable with what I've done and accomplished. Could I have done more? Probably. Could I have done less? Sure. You know, like, I'm happy with what I've done and I think I've done everything I've wanted to. For me, I never set out with an expectation of I wanted to achieve X, Y, and Z. I just kind of have always just taking things as they come and try to do my best all the time. And the last couple of years have been difficult, just in terms of injury and getting older, but I still feel like I have more left in me. When I started to have issues with my back and I started to really not ride very well and I was really having a hard time dealing with it because it had just started to take such a huge foundation piece out of my life that it became something great to look into what the team is and remind myself that we had built this team together and, and here I was losing my ability to ride the way I wanted to ride and I hated myself for it. So to be more involved with the team again 
became a real outlet in helping the riders and mentoring the young guys and, and trying to take someone like Steven who is, who is really coming into his own as a rider. You know, he's learning all of these things so quickly and so fast and, and that, that just makes me feel even better about the future of the team and, and I'm not leaving bike racing, turning my back and walking away. It's just I'm continuing along a path that I started on a long time ago and it feels good to, to be a part of it and help it succeed if I can. My career has been, so far, brief and rapid. I kind of came into the cycling scene, or the racing scene, the cross scene, late, uh, later than a lot of people. You know, I didn't start until I was 25 or 24 racing, almost 29 now. And I think it's a pretty s staggering speed to go from, you know, my first UCI race to, you know, being one of the best in the country and 15th in the world right now. Like, I think it, it, it blows my mind to think about it. Like, every day I think about, kind of how, how fast we've gotten here. Yeah, for me, when I was 14, probably 15 years old uh, in Washington, when I first started racing, we used to do these events and they were kind of old school mountain bike races, one big giant loop and, you know, it's Washington, it rains a lot and uh, it'd be super muddy and it would take three hours and the bikes would break. It turned into like just a survival fest, is more than a race, you know? And, for me, I think the first year of racing bikes, I have more memories of it being exceedingly difficult and challenging to finish the race than actual racing the race, you know. After you've won the national championships, it, it sucks finishing second, you know, and I've finished second, I think, seven times over the last 12 years or something like that, so it'd be annoying to finish second again, but it'd be better than finishing third. <laughs> I got into cycling really as like a young kid. It was just kind of something I could do in a, growing up in a pretty rural area. It was a way of transportation. It just kind of became a, a part of my life and it was just like, okay, well, this is what we do. We find routes to places that we want to go, no matter how far it is. Going from like town to town to get to like skate parks or dirt jumps or wherever, like we wanted to go with our BMX bikes. A lot of times we would want the adventure and like want to ride the like, five hours to get there and kind of find all the places in between and that piece has always been there. Uh, it's always been part of me to want to ride a bike and want to explore whatever area, whatever terrain I'm in on a bike. Right across the country, um, my girlfriend at the time wanted to move from Pensacola. I had this friend that moved to Portland, kind of we're talking about this trip and then we we're like, wait, why don't we just ride bikes there? Like, we don't have that much stuff, like, let's just do it. It was like, it totally reaffirmed my faith in humanity. You go from like, totally not trusting anyone at like the gas station parking lot in your car to following some stranger home who's offered you up a place to stay for the night. You have these experiences riding bikes where you would never get it, driving in a car. It's a totally amazing way to see the country or anywhere and um, see people. And I loved it. I would do it again in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. My dad was a crew coach. I was always around that intensity of crew and I guess that's what I liked about cycling too, but also it was the fact it was almost the opposite of crew is you know you could get lost on your bike for hours and then you come home later and it's almost like you're escaping school or whatever else is going on. The first cyclocross nationals I raced at was in Rhode Island. I was 14 years old and I remember then watching like the elite women category and thinking it was like the cool, they were all the coolest people in the world and when you're young like that it's motivating because it gives you something to like work towards a little bit, you know, like I want to be like that lady riding around the court, you know. I think that I have another 10 years of doing this. And I don't think I'm as good as I'm gonna get on a bike. I mean, there's still a lot I don't quite understand. I'm learning every day. 